Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Retro PC. Mike here, and today we are looking at my Alienware M11XR2. This is a laptop from, I believe, 2010 and has been in my possession since 2014. I originally bought this laptop for school. So at the time I was going to college in 2014 to finally get a degree. <laughs> and I was going to school with an Acer Aspire 1 that I had upgraded the, you know, everything to as much as I I'd maxed it out. Basically, it was one of the last models you could actually upgrade RAM to throw an SSD and all that jazz. And uh, it worked great. And I had an extended battery on it, but it wasn't fun. So I found this in Denver. I was living in Fort Collins, Colorado at the time. I found this in Denver uh, being sold from somebody from for like 200 bucks in perfect condition. And I was like, that would be a fun laptop to bring to school. It's a little bit heavier. Yes, a little bit thicker. It's, I mean, was not as thin as my, what I had been used to at the time, uh, Acer, but I didn't care about that. I just wanted something fun because I had to use it every day, all the time, and I needed it to be very portable. So what did I do? Bought this, upgraded the battery, upgraded the SSD, and it came with stock eight gigabytes of DDR2, DDR2 RAM. Let me look at the RAM really quick. So according to my Amazon order, <laughs> DDR3, I don't know why I couldn't remember that, uh, RAM, I just second guessed myself. So what I want to do, because I still use this computer, is update the RAM with two brand new sticks of DDR3 RAM, eight gigabytes each. Why didn't I do this sooner? Well, according to the internet and the Dell specifications, the maximum allowed RAM for this system is eight gigabytes. However, according to the Alienware community and Reddit at large and other sources, I have seen numerous times that you can update this to 16 gigs of RAM and it will accept it. Why is that? Well, from what I've been able to figure out, the reasoning behind that was just due to the times. Eight gigs was the norm and it had not been tested or confirmed to go beyond that, nor did that really exist as a common thing yet. But apparently 16 gigs is allowed, no other hacks needed. I am here today to put that to the test. Did I waste my money? Do I need to make an Amazon return? Or am I going to be pleasantly surprised with an Alienware M11X from 2010 that is running 16 gigs DDR3? Why didn't I try this sooner? Well, I did mention I do use this as a consistent machine still in my life for other things. It actually sits in a station in the corner of my office on a different desk, which is where I do like my VHS transfers uh, to, to digital any other type of physical documentation. I have a nice scanner over there I use. It's also my printing station. Yes, I don't have a Wi-Fi printer in this house because we hardly print at anything anymore. So if we ever need something, this is the computer we do it from. This computer stays closed these days and is hooked up to two monitors. How is that possible? Well, this computer comes with an HDMI and DisplayPort adapter or input, output. Output, output, which is awesome, which means my two older monitors can hook up to this with ease and it will easily display two screens. Since doing that though, and since upgrading this to Windows 11, yes, this laptop does have Windows 11. It's gotten kind of slow. I have reformatted the drive completely and I don't know if it's just the fact that I'm using two monitors with it these days or what. I don't believe it is because it's been kind of slow for a while with the switch from Windows 10 to Windows 11. It was pretty, it was, it was usable on Windows 10. It was never a speed demon. It got me through just the note-taking process of school and it did my first 
video transfers with ease. However, I think it's time to address the older RAM issue and try to max that out to boost as much life as possible out of this thing as I possibly can. So that's what today's all about, seeing if we can update to 16 gigs of RAM DDR3 in an older Alienware like this. Let's get started. So first things first, we gotta turn this thing off. And I will say this was the time when laptop screens were very glossy and are basically a mirror. I mean, look at that. Hello, I can see my hands perfectly. It's basically a mirror. I could, I could shave while using this and it would be just fine. It's kind of crazy. If it's a perfectly black screen, it is a mirror. I'm glad we've gotten away from this, but it doesn't deter me from loving this laptop. I truly believe that this Alienware format, next to maybe their original format of, or model, like physical model, is the coolest looking you could possibly have. It is absolutely the coolest looking laptop. And I think that the aesthetic of it still holds up today. I mean, it just has so much character. And I have always been drawn towards these, which is why I bought it. Before we get into, make sure it's off here, before we get start getting into the, the nuts and bolts, one thing I have done to this computer is meticulously scraped off the rubber. Yes, this was one of those laptops that was completely covered on all edges, top, and somewhat of the bottom. Not the entire bottom, but some of the bottom. In that high-end, you know, classy business rubber coating that you found on Oh, every ThinkPad for a certain amount of time that's also succumbing to it becoming this melty, sticky mess. Uh, it got to the point where there was no way to even clean it anymore. It was just a lint trap and I, I could touch it and my finger would have some black residue on it. I mean, it was that bad. So I scraped it all off and I'm happy to say that I did so with no damage and I wish it just would have come this way. It looks 10 times better. These ridges that you barely see when the coating is on, look phenomenal. I mean, look at that. It is, I just love it. It was like getting a brand new computer. I was so thrilled. I will say it sucked to do though, and it's worth it. I recommend doing it. It sucks to do. How did I do it? Well, I just took one of these, one of these things and scraped and scraped for about two hours. Yeah, two hours. It sucked. My hand hurt. I had cramps in my hand from doing it. I switched hands. I tried very hard not to scratch it. I think the only thing that really came of it, if you look really close to the camera, probably won't pick it up, but there's some notice of like some motion that where I scraped, but like there's no, there's no scratches or anything. In fact, I could, don't even think I could see it on camera. I can just see it with my, my, with the naked eye. So, hey, small price to pay for a computer now that doesn't feel like it doesn't feel disgusting, to be honest. So, all right, enough talking about that. Let's get into this thing. This is one of those easy access laptops, which I'm very thankful for. Let's crack this thing open just, just by getting this panel off here. I have been into this thing so many times since I've had it, and I got to admit that the screws are starting to show that. So I gotta be kind of careful here not to strip these any worse than some of them are, which again is one of those things. It's just one of those classic tales of designs of laptops in the past did things so much better. Like one, it's one piece. I don't have to sit and pry all this off and all the screws, I can't lose them. I don't have to think twice about where they go. Incredible. So we are in. And right here is our RAM. Let's pop the RAM, shall we? There we go. What do we got here? There's our four gigs. There 
There's our secondary stick. Get that out. There we go. Another four gig. Giving us, of course, eight total. This should be the outcome I was hoping for all along. Let's find out. Again, I can't I can't apologize enough for how glary this screen is. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Moment of truth. Come on. Come on. Come on. So far, so good. Fans aren't going nuts. That's not good. That was pretty weird. Looks like we're getting a reset loop. Not expecting that. It's not working. So we're just in a, in a reset loop here. But let me just try something really quick. Preparing automatic repair. Yeah, uh, might have broke windows a little bit on here. Not worried about that though. I want to get to the, the setup here. Hey, 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 we are reading eight gigs, eight gigs, 16 gigs. That's a good sign. Now we just got to figure out why it's not booting. What we're going to do is see if we get better luck. with a bit of a different configuration of RAM here. I'll take 12 gigs if it'll let me have it. Just gonna throw in a couple of little stick change here. See if that makes a difference. So 16 gigs to 12 gigs. Old stick, new stick. Let's see what happens. So we're in an endless loop cycle still. Doesn't it doesn't like this this either <laughs> at all. So I'm gonna go to F12. We'll go to setup. It sees it, but it's not liking it. It's not it's not it's not playing ball. So <sighs> the next step is to just bring it back to its original state, see if Windows loads. I'm probably gonna give that, use that as my answer to, is this really possible or not? Okay, it should just load fine now like it used to, as long as we haven't crashed Windows completely. So, so if it does work, and we just jump into Windows, we know the RAM is just not playing ball. If it doesn't work, though, that means I've just kind of screwed up Windows, and we might have a chance. But we'll see. It's back to its original state. It should just load right up. Unless I crashed Windows. Nope. It's fine. So I think... That is kind of that for now. I'm not happy with the result. And I'm hoping somebody out there can tell me how to make this possible. If you like this style of content, please join my live streams that I am uh, getting going here these last few weeks. I am trying to get that a community going in the live stream space of this channel that I think could be a lot of fun, which is me just doing stuff like this 
freestyle, for lack of a better word, where I'm just working on computers. I got a lot of projects going on with a lot of my old laptops. And I'm doing a lot of the work live in real time with chat open to get your suggestions, thoughts, hang out with me, whatever you want to do. They vary. They're usually on weekends and they're usually a little bit later in the day. Sometimes I'll do super late lives, I think, because sometimes I'm a night owl with this stuff. It keeps you up projects like this sometimes. So please do join my live stream. Please subscribe and keep your notifications on if you want to see when I'm live streaming. I'm really hopeful that we get a, a pretty cool community going there. Again, let me know if there's anything I need to do to make this work that I might have missed. I'm open to any suggestions and I am more than willing to tear this apart to make it happen. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.